condemned. Can't we get out of this? Hey, what would it be if you were allowed five minutes with God and you're allowed to ask one question? What do you want to know? Because you know, you, you thought this over now, you know the, about the opposites, about the yang and the yin. And you know you can't ask God and say, Hey, Big Daddy, will you give me a tip to beat the game? <laughs> it won't work. And what shall I ask God? So you can think, of all the things you might ask for, you know, an electric guitar, a uh, million dollars. And you know that wouldn't be the answer, because that would be Yang. There would be a big Yin along with it somewhere. I, mean, I don't know what to ask. So you go in and say, God, beyond positive and negative, what is reality? And God says, my child, your question has no meaning. Oh dear, you thought, there it's gone, my one chance lost. <laughs> you think, you get a friend of yours and say, hey, look, you go in. <laughs> and tell me what he says. You ask him, what question should I ask you? He goes in and says, oh God, what question should I ask you? And God says, so you do want a problem. <laughs> well, you've got one. You thought it up. You wanted, a, you wanted a game in which white only wins. There's your problem. You made it up. You had to have that problem. Because otherwise, if you don't have a problem, you wouldn't know you were here. It's like, you can't be yourself without something you call other. How will you know you are you unless somebody else is somebody else altogether? In other words, the sensation of I here, living, sensitive, alive, peeking out, beady-eyed out of my skin, entirely is it with reference to something over there, which isn't me. I don't know what it is, but it, it works all by itself, and this, you're pretty scared of it. And there it is. And I can't have this feeling without that feeling. So there's the same hocus pocus going on here. If I can't feel me without having other, that's the exoteric. Esoteric means I am the other. They're inseparable. How can you have self without other? How can there be other without self? You other on me and self on yourself. I self on me and other on you. But you can't, as it says, you can't have one without the other. Yang and yin. So in the same way, I say, well, um, this other, I'd like to manage it. I'd like to control it. Now, I don't know all these people around messing up my life. I don't want them to be that much other. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix you. Then I get on a power kick. And there are all kinds of power kicks, let me warn you. It's not just politics and economics and business. The worst power kicks are spiritual. Like astrology. You'd like to know the future? Would you really? It's a power kick to know the future so that you can control it. No surprise. If you know the future, it's already past. But if you want to know something and to have knowledge, then there must be the unknown. Just as if you want self, you must have other. So the future is always the unknown. The past is the known. And what we witness as our present is the magical appearance of the known from the unknown. You know what's going to happen the next second. I mean, there might be another big earthquake right underneath us. Any, any minute now. Or the Russians might decide to release the A-bomb. Any minute, you would have a heart attack, drop dead. You don't know what's coming. Well, relax. <laughs> <laughs> then watch, watch, watch this thing happen. It's incredible. Just watch it. You, it, self-other, 
it's just vibration going on. But you think also now, wait a minute, self and other, that means voluntary versus involuntary. What I do and what happens to me. Now, what do I do? Well, I walk, I think, I talk, I move my hands. I can be nice to you or nasty to you. I would regard both as my doing. But what about my um, blood circulation? I normally think that that happens to me. I mean, if my heart would stop, I wouldn't say I'd done it. I would have said that it, it happened to me. But Buddhists will say, your heart stopped, that was your karma. And karma means nothing else except doing. It's your doing that your heart stopped. You know, that doesn't mean, don't take it literally in a superstitious way that because you um, spat in someone's face in a past life, you're having heart failure as a punishment for it this time around. The universe is not geared to be a kind of judicial system. Uh, I mean, a lot of priests figure it that way in order to frighten people. But karma means simply, if you die in a plane crash or have a heart attack, it's your doing. But that simply means you've got to rethink what you mean by doing. Now, I've already proved to you that black is white. So now I'm going on to prove to you that what you do is what happens to you. And what happens to you is what you do. Because you can't tell the difference between doing. You can't tell what you mean by doing unless something happens to you to contrast it with, and vice versa. You can't say of something that happens to you unless it feels different from something you do. Now let's take a look at our breath. Are you doing it, or does it happen to you? If you do breathing exercise, You can feel I'm doing it. Just I'm breathing in just as I might raise my hand. But after a while I breathe out. I feel I'm breathing out. And I can forget all about it and it goes on. And it happens to me. That's why in yoga, which means, yoga means union, joining. Same as the Latin, yungare. Why in yoga you breathe. Breathing is the main thing in yoga. Because it's to teach you that there's no difference between what you do and what happens to you. You learn that through breathing. You can make the, the very best breath. See, we in the, get into Christian terms here. The Holy Spirit, spirit means breath, see? Spiritus in Latin, pnefma in Greek, ruach in Hebrew. Breath. Now, there's ordinary breath, when you, you know, most people's normal breathing. <laughs> or, um, forced breath, when, uh, or, you know, when people try to sing and their, their voice is forced. But then, the next breath is called Holy Spirit, Holy Breath. That's when the breath is no longer forced, it happens. When it's nirvana breath, blow out, same thing as Holy Spirit. And then that, you see, the, that unforced one. go on and on. So, that's why when monks chant, or devotees of any kind chant, they have the idea that I am a flute, and the breath, the prana, the spiritus of the divine flows through it. That's what chanting is all about. Make yourself a tube for the divine wind. But that also means, realize the unity of the voluntary and the involuntary. That's really what's meant by doing the will of God. Do the will.
it's um, one reason why we get confused in English as to whether we mean will or whether we mean shall. I will drown and no one shall save me. <laughs> so, think, behind what you call voluntary, you decide. Having reviewed the evidence, I have decided it would be best to buy this brand of detergent. You made a decision. How did you make a decision? Well, I reviewed the evidence, I added up the price, and I came to the conclusion. Yeah, I know, I know all that. But how did you work the machinery? The computer in your head? You know, you pushed all these buttons, but what's underneath the buttons? Oh, I don't know, I never looked. So you see that involuntary growth called the brain underli underlies your voluntary decision. Because you, when you decide, you don't first decide to decide and decide to decide to decide. You just decide. But that means there's something else behind it. Well, you think that's terrible because if what I do happens to me and it isn't really doing at all, then I'm in a fatalistic scene. Yes, but I said, on the other hand, what happens to you is what you do. It works equally that way. You know, you have an earthquake. And the thoughts in your head drift about like clouds in the sky. But you can't do anything. So in the same way, this whole strain, the futility, of the strain to make white wind and to improve the world, that entire futility, the frustration of it is what you mean by I. Now it goes. It won't work and the I collapses. Everybody is terrified of this happening. Suddenly finding out that you don't have an ego. Heaven preserve me from that because I've been building up this personality of mine all these years. I've been very carefully nurtured, this personality. You tell me it doesn't exist? No, because your personality is a phantom even more insubstantial than your body. Personality is a work of art. It's like music, which vanishes as soon as it's played. <laughs>